everybody, welcome back to Top Water Tuesday! I'm Dan Herring for Fish Den 365, and today for Top Water Tuesday, we are going to be talking about top water floating fluke style baits. All right, so we've done videos top water fishing with flukes, with the standard zoom fluke, and a lot of the other companies make similar baits to the zoom fluke, and we talked about how to do that, how to fish that as a top water lure with separate rigging and, and different types of retrieves, and I'll put a link to that video right up here. That was a very popular video, a lot of people watched it, but this one uh, is a little bit different in that it's going to be specific to the Z-Man Shad Z, the Z-Man Scented Jerk Shad Z. The reason why I thought it would be interesting to do a specific video on this fluke style bait is it's made with this super stretchy Elastec material. And as you may be aware, this super stretchy Elastec material is made to float. So I thought it would be an interesting video to show how this looks on the water when you're fishing it because does it look alive? Does it look dead? One thing I do like about this is that it's got a, it's very flimsy, right? So it should have some action to it. It should, should look alive in the water, even though it's going to stay floating. At least I think it'll stay floating. We'll see. We're going to try some different rigging. We'll show you what we're going to do there as well. We're going to we're going to try a, a four owner screw lock hook. That's how I like to fish a fluke. But we'll also fish with a a small almost like a drop, drop shot style hook right through the nose, an open hook right through the nose. That's another way I like to fish these. We'll explain how, why, and all the ins and outs. But let's take it to the water right now to demonstrate how this actually looks and acts in the water. We got two sizes. We got a five inch one here, but we also have a smaller scented shad Z that is four inches long. A really nice looking bait, maybe for smallmouth and some, some of those uh, aggressive type of uh, fish like a smallmouth or even a spotted bass. Let's take it to the water. Got a couple packs of these Z-Man Elastec fluke type baits here called the Jerk Shads. And uh, generally how I like to fish my fluke is with a, a 4 aught hook like this with the, with the centering pin. So let's see how the jerk shads work with that, knowing that it's this Elastec material that I believe floats. Now, one thing I'm noticing right away, just picking up this bait, is it's a lot softer than I expected it to be, which is a good thing. And you can see it's very, very, very stretchy. All right, so let's get this thing rigged and we'll see how it looks <coughs> on the water as a floating fluke, assuming it's going to float. So uh, a little harder to work with this Elastec stuff, so bear with me as I, I get this thing started here. It's so rubbery that uh, it's hard to get started. All right, we're going to rig it upside down first and show you what that looks like and why we'll explain why we rig upside down. It's because the back is not round like the belly. The back is squared, so it acts as a keel. And because of that, when you rig a, a fluke upside down <coughs> and throw it out there as a top water, or even if it's not a top water, the, uh, the nice thing about that <coughs> is that you can make it walk <coughs> the dog very nicely. But let's see how this thing looks in the water before we do anything here. Well, the first thing is it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't float. It it, uh, it sinks with this hook. So let's see how it works in the top water. sinks very slowly so it's easy to keep on top you can see I can make it dance and move it's a 
throw it out here a little ways. You can actually reel it across the top, but it doesn't do anything different than the, than the regular fluke with this hook. It sinks, which I was not expecting. So let's see what happens when we try a different hook. Because this is not what I expected. I thought it would just float out here on the surface, but it doesn't. It, uh, it breaks that water tension and it goes down. It fishes slow, but it does go down. Looks nice in the water. Got a good look, a lot like a, a fluke. All right, so I'll take this off and one of the nice things about this Elastec stuff, as you can see I'm having a hard time getting this off of here. You know, when I'm using a regular fluke, I like to use a, uh, a little screw lock. And I'll put that inside a little hook and then I'll nose hook it. But because this is elastic, I could just nose hook it without worrying about it coming off. The reason why you use that little screw lock is to stop the bait from flying off your hook. But because this is that elastic stuff, it's not nearly as likely to come off the hook. It's very, very stretchy and it forms right over the right over the hook. It just forms right around the hook, so you're not gonna throw it off. Uh, very easily Let's see if this floats Now that floats You can see it uh, giving some uh, Scent trail there. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Let's see how it works Oh, yeah It just barely goes under but look at that action it does go under but boy it looks pretty good and because it does float it's a lot easier to keep up on the surface and because you're hooking it with that hook that way just coming out of the nose well you can see what that means it means that it's gonna stay on the surface a lot a lot more a lot better you could rig it upside down through the nose too I would think and Maybe get even a different act. This is the five inch jerk shad. And uh, you can see how that has that nice action to it. Hopefully you can see it down there. It's a little muddy, the water's a little muddy. And then it has that, you know, you, you can just lay it on the surface as well and it'll just lay there like it's hurt. It will sink slightly. We brought a four inch bait. I'm curious to see how that will work with this same small nose rigging hook so this is a four inch jerk shad you can see that's smaller Let's see if that still wants to flow so this could be a a good river bait to use when you're looking for that river top water bite so i'm just gonna nose hook this guy there you go Let's see how that looks in the water and that floats too as you can just see it floating there <clears throat> oh look at that yeah that looks good this could be a really nice smallmouth retrieve you know just just uh Basically reeling it real fast along the top, along the surface of the water here. Boom, 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 boom. Look at that. You make it look like it's really uh, like a uh, sick or hurt or wounded fish or trying to get away. And then you stop. And then boom, boom, boom. That's one of the best ways to fish a popper or other topwater lures, including fluke style baits. Just pop it along the surface like that. Make it look like it's hurt. Stop. Pop along the surface. And the nice thing about this bait is because it floats, I don't know if you can see it out there, it's just floating out there right now. So because it floats, when you stop it, and then you want to start it again, you don't have to get the bait back up from the from sinking. It's just gonna go, it's just gonna come, you know, it's just gonna do that speed thing again. I stop, it's already there. Now I go again, stop, it's already there, skipping it. So I like that. If I'm trying to get the fluke bite bone going as a topwater bite, well then this has got what I want to 
do that, right? Because look at that. I can go fast, 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 stop. Boom, 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 boom. Jerk it along, stop. Jerk it along, stop. Jerk it along, stop. And then when you do stop, well, it's got that bait fish profile. It just looks like it's hurt or something's wrong with it. And you can even slow it down. That's the other thing you can do with this is you can go throw it out there, pop, 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 slow it down. Like it's really, really hurt. Then, oh, it's scared again, pop, 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 pop. Slow it down, just just jerk it a little bit. Out of here, out it comes again, slow it down. Here it comes again, slow it down and just move it along a little bit. So yeah, that, that's gonna work and that tail moves too. I'm liking that. I'm liking that for Top Water Tuesday. Let's take it back to the boathouse and we'll talk a little more about this. Well, we're back here in the boathouse on a chilly day. Uh, it's in the evening now, back home from work. I did this uh, on my lunch break and the first thing we learned was that when you're using one of these owner style screw lock hooks one like that it is not easy to get that dang screw lock started in the head of the bait my goodness i struggled with that but after i finally got it we tried fishing it upside down in different ways and we were a little bit disappointed to learn that at least on the five inch fluke the one i fished on it made the bait sink now albeit it was a very slow sink but it did sink and I was expecting that it would stay afloat. So the way I look at this now is this fish is very similar to any other standard fluke bait. It might not sink at the, as fast a rate as a, as a standard fluke, but it still does sink. And therefore, you know, when you stop the bait, it's going under the water. Now you can still fish it as a top water by scooting it across the surface very fast, just the way the video showed, uh, you know, you could, you can, uh, you can actually reel it straight along in the water. If you reel it upside down, it actually has a slight wiggle to it upside down through the water. You can keep it on the surface all those ways. But when you stop it, it will sink. So then that led us uh, to trying the, the single hook. And when we did that on the five inch, it basically stayed on the surface. It might have gone under just like by the nose, the nose would go under, but the back would stay out, or it would just barely go under the water. But when we tried it on the four inch bait, this one stayed on the surface no matter what we did. And the nice thing about this, uh, this elac elastic material is you don't need a, a, one of these spring, uh, you don't need one of these centering pin locks to get to lock it in the bait. It's not coming off because of this stretchy material. It just forms itself right around the hook. You could throw this a long time and that sucker is not going to tear off. It's not going to come off of there. So that's one of the advantages of nose hooking the bait this way. Now before I get into the details about nose hooking the bait, we should talk about this method a little bit more because this owner four eye hook is a pretty thick hook. It's almost like a super line hook. So you may be able to use a lighter wire hook and do your standard Texas rig and, and get that bait to float. We don't know because I haven't had a chance to experiment with it. I didn't have that hook with me at lunch today, so I'm sorry, but I didn't get a chance to, to throw it that way. That may be the subject of a future video. Now, back to this. Fishing it like this, I really, really liked this because when, uh, when I put this, this hook in here, which is a probably a one or a one knot drop shot hook you just nose hook it like this then the bait looked very good on the surface it stayed on there it might turn on its side now and then but it stayed on the surface and when i started hitting that bait fast you saw it skipping along the surface now the water temperature out there today is probably in the mid to high 40s so it'll even be a little livelier when that water temperature would be more like when you'd fish this thing in the 60s and 70s and 80s so that would make this bait even livelier in the water and when you would stop it, it would just look like it's dying or struggling on the surface. So you can make it skip, 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 skip along the surface, stop it. Much like the way I might fish a popper, like, uh, like that popper that I, we talked about the other week. Uh, that, one was the, that one was the Bill Lewis Spitfire. I'd fish this the same way, just skipping it along the surface and then stop. Skip it along the surface and then stop. And even when you stop, you can kind of move it slowly and subtly like it's hurt. And then it gets a little energized again or gets scared again and you flitter it along the surface. What's nice about that is you can cover some water doing that 
and it, it just looks so natural in the water. I can't wait to try that and watch those fish come up and explode on it because I know that's what's going to happen. This would also be a really good bait to use in the river, in any of the, our local rivers like the Delaware or Susquehanna for smallmouths. You can throw this out there and uh, you can actually, you know, it'll probably float on the way down through the current. If it goes under, it'll only be under an inch or so. And so now you have a bait that looks like it's hurt on the top and you can, you can let it float down the current and then when you get to an eddy, just skip it along inside that eddy. I'm telling you, on the right days, that's gonna kill a bunch of smallmouths. The other thing you can do with these baits is you can you can paint them up a little bit. You can get some black marker, put eyes on it. You put a dot on the side. You can put red gills on it. It's uh, you can do a lot of interesting things by painting it that way. Let me show you one perch pattern that would really look good here. I think I have one with me here. Yeah, here it is. So. Put that back. So this one is uh, this one's called the Pro Yellow Perch color, but I would add something to it. I would get a black marker and just paint vertical lines or almost vertical lines. They would be just a little 45 degree angle black lines down maybe three or four along each side of that bait, and then I put a little orange around the. I put a little red maybe on the gills and a little orange around the bottom of the belly of the bait. It's already got some yellow on there and that would really make this thing look like a perch. So all those Pocono lakes, you can throw this thing out there on the Pocono lakes, paint it up like a perch, whether it's a five inch or a four incher, and they're both gonna catch fish because they, they eat a lot of perch up there. And boy, I'm telling you, I'm looking forward to doing that come uh, spring and summer. Can't wait to, to give that a try. So I'm real curious to know what my viewers think about this bait, the Shad Z. I mean, I've always fished the Fluke. I've fished yum, uh, the Yum version of, of this, which I forget what it was called. Uh, it was a really good bait. They, it's no longer in production. Yum made a Fluke style bait. Uh, the Houdini Shad. It was called the Houdini Shad. Really, really good lure. Had a really neat tail on it, a diamond shaped tail, and you could cut the middle out. Great bait, caught a lot of fish. Uh, the, another really good fluke bait that I've liked to fish in the past is the Yamamoto fluke style bait. That's a heavier uh, bait and it will sink and you can go down a little deeper with that one. But uh, I'd like to know if you've had experience with the Elastec type, type flukes, these Z-Mans for example, if you fish them, how you fish them, do you drop shot them, have you thrown it as a top water, what kind of success have you had with them? Please comment in the comments, let me know what you think of the idea of fishing these and whether or not you fished them and had success with them or not. We'd love to hear it. Well, that's it for this Topwater Tuesday. Looking forward to another one next week. I got a bunch of videos lined up to do. I, I just can't to get them, I can't get the time to edit. I got a little cold going there a while ago and work was really busy, but we're gonna be doing a, a video real soon. Just wanna show you this real quick because I want you to know what's coming. We're going to be doing a, a video on this guy, these glide baits. That's coming out real soon. And then we've got a, a video where my buddy John Tosca, who makes these, was out with me, and we were fishing. We were fishing blade baits on a local little local uh, reservoir near T John's house, and we had a good day on the blade baits. I want to show you that. I got some unboxing videos to do, so there's. There's plenty to show in the, in the future, and of course, we're always going to keep doing Top Water Tuesday. I don't intend to stop that. There's more that I have to, to do. There's always new baits coming out, new things to review, new top fives and top tens that we can do. So we'll be doing all that and uh, looking forward to getting into the Christmas season now. If you have any interest in any videos, let me know what you'd like. You know, if you, if you want to see any recommendations for what to buy for Christmas for gifts and that kind of thing. If you have an interest in that, let me know. I know a lot of the other channels are doing that, so I've kind of been avoiding that, but if you'd like me to do it, I will. And uh, any other ideas, I'd be more than welcome to, to hear and, and uh, see what I can do to, to uh, come out and, and uh, meet some of your, your requests, some of your needs. All right, that's it for Top Water Tuesday. Be safe out there. Hope to see you on the water. And as always, may God bless your fishing endeavors.